Today, I'm going to be talking about maybe the most historic moment in the history of Wilson University, and it's this week, so stay tuned. Welcome on this Monday morning, October the night, 2023, to All Things Apostolic. I'm Nathaniel Wilson, and I'm glad that you're with us. All of you that regularly join us, we are glad that you are here. Always, we're glad when you're here. And those of you that are new, we're also glad that you're here. And good things are happening at Wilson University. Now, this is this week, this week week is uh, maybe one of the most important weeks in the progress of Wilson University in its history. This week on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, a site visit team will come from WASC, the Western Association of Schools and Colleges. I think the name's been adjusted a little bit since then, but um, Basically, that's what it is. They are coming, and um, this will be our second visit, like I told you before. And uh, sometimes it takes three. Sometimes it takes four visits to uh, get from zero to accreditation. So anyway, we have this second visit. It's very, very important. There are 40 criteria. We've already passed 24 of them in the first meeting. And uh, so this meeting just focuses on the other 16 criteria, and we've spent a lot of time uh, and a lot of money uh, and a lot of energy getting to this point. We feel good about it, and uh, we need your prayers that God will just help all of us and help the site visit team uh, to do what is best for the kingdom of God. Amen. And so... Uh, here on Monday, we it, all around me, people are just scurrying around, getting ready for uh, the visit Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So the school pays for everybody to be here. The school pays their flight, their transportation, all of that. The school provides them transportation while they are here. It's a team of, I think, five people, maybe six. I'm not quite sure. And uh, Dr. Gregg is the head of the chair of this committee and was the chair on the first one. So we consider this a really good thing in that she already knows us and it, she's not starting from zero. And I think one or two of the other people on the committee have also been here before. So we are looking, um, we are looking for good results. Now, one of the things, and I just got through... Uh, uh, just the other day, making a special little video vignette to all of the board members and to all of the faculty and to all of the students, all of which are stakeholders in the school. And uh, uh, the WASC committee will want to visit with all of them. So I encourage them in this little video on an email. Uh, if you didn't look at it, please go to your email if you're one of those groups and look at it. Um, I encourage you to be in the meeting for your particular group with WASP. There is a meeting for your particular group with WASP. And uh, let me just read to you. The Board of Trustees meets Wednesday, October the 11th at 1 p.m. This Wednesday, two days from now. It meets Wednesday, October the 11th at uh, 1 p.m. And then the students have an open s uh, session. Any student of Wilson University can join. I, I would assume maybe any, any uh, past I, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, you're welcome to join too. But um, that's on October 11th, Wednesday also, and that's at 3.30 p.m. And then um, on... Uh, Thursday, those first two are on Wednesday. On Thursday, the faculty has an open session, October 12th, Thursday, at 11.15 a.m. So anyway, if you're a part of any of those groups, we want, certainly encourage you, strongly encourage you. Number one, if you're in the area, 
Sacramento, you're welcome to come straight to the administrative offices of Wilson University and be a part of it from right here in the place. You are, um, uh, if you can't do that, all three of those meetings will also be on Zoom. So we would encourage you, if you receive any documents or things that you need to read over so that you are informed, WASC would be delighted if you will enter conversation with them. Um, and if you had any of the material that was sent out from uh, from the school, that kind of gives you an idea of what they're going to be asking and and uh, and what the data is that they may be looking for, whatever. There's different stuff for different groups. Uh, then I would encourage you to be sure and look at all of that. So uh, we don't look uh, at this with trepidation. We look at this with uh, uh, expectation. And um, and we are happy this very happy that this is occurring because the big question here is the big question. Who is going to inform the theology of the apostolic movement in the coming 10 years or 15 years or 20 years or till the Lord come? You know, with all of the access that people have today and young people have today, the people that's going to be the leaders of the church in the very near future, with all the access they have to all kinds of doctrinal error and, and charlatans and deceptions to fall into that look appealing, and all of this is available on the Internet every day of their lives, this was not so in my day. This was not so in many of your days or in days gone by because there was no such thing as the Internet and there was no access for these these people, false doctrine teachers and charlatans and people who are uh, 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 greedy for filthy lucre and so utilize the gospel as a medium to uh, gain money. God forbid that any of us should meet the judgment seat with that because that's going to be a bad one. For anybody that's in that uh, position. But nevertheless, people have access to all of this stuff. There's also things invading into the movement, weird ideas, things that people conjure up in their minds. Somewhere there has to be an institutional framework that deals with the form of theological doctrine and also deals with the dynamics of theological doctrine and uh, apostolic theological form, an apostolic theological doctrine. So if it's not the school who's going to do that, are you aware that most pastors, the stuff that's being taught here is just sound, really powerful apostolic stuff, but you, are, are you aware that most pastors would tell you in a so-called New York Minute that they do not have time? I mean, there's an enormous amount of time to develop First, to know content that's necessary for a sound apostolic church. Then, after learning the, the content and knowing the content, being able to transfer that into bite-sized sections or lessons for people, and then being able to articulate what one knows. Knowing something's one thing, but being able to transfer that with, with articulation, with teaching, is another thing. And um, uh, all of that takes hundreds of hours before a student ever enters the room, before there's ever a student to hear it. So then, then there is the teaching itself. Well, that's hundreds of more hours. Then there is the assessment, if you want to call it grading, the content reception, the degree of, of uh, understanding that the student has gained in a, in a class setting, in a learning setting. Setting, uh, which is hundreds of more hours. And uh, how do you assess that? Well, you have to prepare tests, or you have to prepare questions, or you have to prepare something to uh, to to gauge how your students are doing. That's hundreds of more. Hours. This is why pastors that are wise know that they cannot give everything that's needed for a deeply grounded church. Now you say, well. How did the early church do it? The Apostle Paul and the other apostles worked very hard. Now, we have the books that they wrote that are in the Bible, but they were teaching. We don't have everything they wrote. We don't have everything that they taught. 
in terms of, uh, of, of every lesson and lesson plans and lesson outlines. And, and uh, for example, there's the letter that Paul wrote to Laodicea. We never, we know what was written. It's talked about in the Bible, but, uh, but we've never seen it. We don't know what it says. We know it did agree in doctrine with what else he taught. And so, and then you, the, the whole scheme of the Old Testament and, and what is the theological framework that a person can look at the Bible and get, and get a grip on that? Well, to teach all of that in the local church, the local church every week has to deal with, with personal problems, with current uh, events, with, um, uh, with all of the stuff that goes along with people. They live, uh, they're born, there's births that create issues and need visitation and need prayer. And, uh, uh, there's generals uh, that require time. There's weddings where people are united in marriage and starting families. All the counseling that goes along with, with wedding. There's, there's all of the preaching that exhorts and encourages people and builds morale. All of that is part and parcel of pastoring, which all takes up a huge amount of the time that a person has in the pulpit or behind a lectern teaching. And so to expect uh, to expect to be able to do all of this uh, uh, just within three services a week is not a good expectation, especially if you're talking about leadership. Now, you know, people are going to go to heaven that never go to Wilson University, believe it or not. But for leaders, where are they getting trained in apostolic truth? Where are the teachers of tomorrow? What are they learning, and where are they learning it? Yeah. And is it coming from a, a doctrinally sound voice and um, uh, that is proven and known and trusted and so forth? And are the teachers people that are proven and known and trusted? So all of this plays into this week's meetings. So we need your prayer. We need you to pray, God, help help Wilson University. And we need your support. We don't hardly ever talk about this, but a university does not run off of tuition alone. In fact, you cannot, you cannot be accredited and only run off of tuition. You have to have at least 20% of the income of the school uh, from sources other than tuition. And those sources are grants and gifts and wherever they the school staff can get the funding from and um right now i'm happy to say that wilson university this year it's it's for every dollar that came from tuition there's 40 cents that also came in that was not from tuition so it's 40 percent instead of the minimal 20 percent uh, for a number of years we had a hard time meeting the 20 percent but we did um however now this year it's at 40%. So there's people that are catching the vision. There's people that are understanding these how schools operate. This is how they do. People, and in many cases, especially alumni that have been tremendously blessed and whose whole ministries in future are, are doubled and tripled and quadrupled in terms of productivity and blessing and growth and understanding and knowledge and know-how. Uh, those people begin to realize that uh, I just may have a debt. I may I'm I may be indebted to make sure that this same process is going on with students that are coming behind me, and so they become uh, uh, serious sponsors of Wilson University. Um, and so I don't like I say I don't I don't hardly ever talk about this, but I am today. So if you are not a sponsor, I encourage you. Um, I encourage you to provide substantial assistance to the one thing in the movement that is already looking to the future and is preparing present leadership and also in looking to the future, in forming the theology so that your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren can still find apostolic churches. You say, well, apostolic churches have been here for years, and, they, and, and uh, they haven't had Bible schools. Well, they have had Bible schools, and most of the leadership, the highest quality leadership by far, has come through Bible schools on a 
if you're if you're quantifying a, a percentage of who was uh, the best leaders that have come through or been deeply influenced by Bible schools. Now we have a university that has the Bible school content, but has spread that Bible school content to include also things like BAM, business as ministry, and and uh, giving the whole church that kind of strength. But all of those, all of this to say, all of those churches, many of them who had nothing except a good godly pastor, they made it. And I think you can make it today with that, but everybody in your church won't make it. And secondly, they did not have to contend with the internet and all of the other sources of information that are penetrating the minds of believers. It's a different world. I'm not, I'm not just saying that. It's a world that we have to respond to with vigor and with a little bit of defiance and with a great amount of faith that what we've got is better than anything the world can offer. So I encourage you this week, be praying for us. I encourage you this week, we'll try to keep some updates coming to you. Uh, I, I pray that you become a, a sponsor, a, a financial sponsor of Wilson University, and I pray that um, that we have a great report for you at the end of this week. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. See you tomorrow.